Today is Tuesday, April 24th, 2012, and we are interviewing Jerry Osborne at the Illinois State Library. Mr. Osborne is 68 years old, having been born on February 25th, 1944. My name is Michelle Shorefighty, and I will be the interviewer. Mr. Osborne, could you state for the record what war and branch of service you served in? As in the United States Army in uh, Korea. What was your rank? E5. Which is, is that, yes, what is that? I like the rankings, E5, is that how, I'm not really. E5 is just a grade you run up. It's a grade, okay. Um, and you said you served in Korea. Mm -hmm. What were your duties or assignments while you were there? Well, I came out of Fort Knox, Kentucky as a long range reconnaissance. And they shot a boat in the Gulf in Korea, so they needed extra people, I guess, in Korea. So they sent me to Korea, and I ship, got shipped up by the 38th parallel. They didn't need long-range reconnaissance in Korea, so they kept me in the battalion headquarters till they figured out what they was going to do with me. Me and another guy, there's two of us coming out of Fort Knox, mm -hmm. and the uh, company man, he said, we'll find something for you to do. So we just was the flunkies around the battalion for a long time. I loaded ammunition. It was a it was a armored battalion, mm -hmm. and uh, so they had tanks in the field and all this. So they just needed guys that could load ammunition. You know, and I was one of those guys. So I loaded ammunition for probably close to a month, and of course you rotate out over the years, you know, or mm -hmm. weeks or whatever. So they rotated all the top-ranking guys. Usually you're a five. That's a five. That's what the five does. He's a, usually the guy that runs each place, you know. Mm -hmm. So these guys rotated out, and I think I was PFC. Well, anyway, <laughs> I wound up being the guy that kind of ran the system. I wasn't allowed to because it wasn't five. You had to be five to be able to run it. Run it. So I just kind of, you know, it, it was, I need to explain where we was at. We was in Fort Beavers, Korea, you know, and it was a fort. That's the only fort in Korea. So you, they had a compound on the south side. Mm -hmm. Then we had a little road that went between us, and then over on the north side was the ammo dump and a ration breakdown. They had the ammo dump over there because they didn't want to blow everybody up over on the south side, see? Yeah, I know. <laughs> so that, I was just kind of up with myself. If they needed ammunition, they called me in and said, load me all 90 millimeter rounds for tanks. Wow. So we loaded those trucks, and I'd I didn't drive at that time. I didn't have a driver's license. You got to have an international driver's license and drive anywhere. So oh, I didn't have a license. So somebody else would drive it. I just loaded it. So it went on for a good while that way. You know, and so finally I said, well, we need more drivers. We've got to have a guy's driver's license. So they sent me to school down uh, Camp Casey, South. And got your it's, license. It's kind of complicated to drive international license, you know, oh, in yeah. Korea. Supposedly all over the world if you had to go. Mm -hmm. So finally passed through that. So I hadn't rode with anybody. They just, they said, just load that truck and go. I knew basically about where it was at. Up in the, so they just sent you. They just sent me. Yeah. <laughs> so you did that then for a while. I was a kid, didn't care. <laughs> <laughs> so I drove all up in the north. The 38th parallel is supposed to be the divide line between North Korea and South Korea. Well, uh -huh. it's not. It's There's quite a distance between the fence line and 38th parallel. Well, all in that in-between, that's where I drove. All oh, the tank, wow. tank companies all up in that area, mm -hmm. you know, so they had to be supplied. Oh, yeah, definitely. So i done that for a long time, and finally I got up a TFC seal. I finally got... Kind of a four E four one two E four. Mm -hmm. See, well, I thought I kind of had her made. See, get a little more money, a little more rank. Well, they said, well, you can't, you can't be up there. You gotta, you gotta drive 
uh, Jeeps. We had one Jeep in the whole battalion. That's all we had, <laughs> you know. And I had to drive for everybody. All the, oh, wow. We had a lieutenant in the motor pool, lieutenant in the supply, and, and lieutenant in the, what they call P-O-L, is the fuel and oil. Uh -huh. You know, and then uh, I had a liaison officer, and I, I never did understand what a liaison officer was, but he was, I think he was a, uh, about half a lawyer that took care of Everybody. everything we tore up in the country, you know. So I drove for him, mostly for him, because he had to do a lot of work. The rest of the guys were just on compound, and they didn't go nowhere unless they had official business, go back south somewhere. Mm -hmm. So I drove for him, oh, probably... I'd say it wasn't over two months, I don't think, and he, he was a pretty good old boy. We got along real well, you know. We'd drive up in them boondocks to them Koreans, and he tried to go negotiate. If we run over a chicken, well, he had to pay for that chicken and all the legs, eggs that would lay for the last next 20 years, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so he did the negotiating, but too. But you couldn't leave the Jeep, see, sitting there because the Koreans would carry it off. So. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't like to go by himself, and I and I said I can't go with you. I said I got to stay with you and watch you. I'd be responsible for the jeep. See, uh -huh. so, and you didn't want to leave the jeep. No, <laughs> no way. <laughs> so we we go up there to there, and, and you couldn't get there. You, you know, you just go so far, some roads, and then cow paths, and oh wow. So he finally just walk on up into the villages by himself. You know, and. I was supposed to carry a gun. I didn't carry a gun because I had to clean it all the time. You couldn't turn it back into the arms room without it being clean. And then you uh, wouldn't accept it. I clean it and not, not good enough. So Lieutenant, he'd say, well, I'll carry 45. He'd carry 45 up there. And so we get by like that. It, but it if was, he took off and left you. Yeah, I didn't have a rock. Mm. <laughs> of course, I guess as a kid, you don't care. Right. You look back on it and go, what? Well, nobody getting shot, you know. Yeah. But I know you could have very easily. I think they killed seven right there around where we was at. GIs oh, wow. Three-quarter ton truck. So you could have got shot, I guess. Yeah. But you weren't thinking about that no. at the time. No. Just get there and get back. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Do your job. <laughs> Can you tell me about a couple of your most memorable experiences? Yeah, uh, I drove a truck. Mm -hmm. So we had a motor pool that had a probably, I don't remember, six or seven trucks in it. And they were the five tons, what they call a five ton. But we had one truck that was a long bedded truck. It looked like a tractor trailer with just a set of doodles on the back. It was an extra long truck. Mm -hmm. And so we had a, our tank companies were around our compound there, so they were always taking tanks apart, and we hauled whatever they took apart back to Casey. That was the main area down there to work on stuff. So they took this long truck over, and I think I took it over there. I took it over there. I think the sea company said, just take that truck over and leave it. So I did. I took it over and left it. And I, about two or three days later, went back to get it. And it had the tank tracks, you know? Mm -hmm. They had these tank tracks, and they had, I think they were six on it, stacked on this truck. Well, them things weigh, I don't know. And these old trucks were gasoline engines. We had some diesels, but this was an old gas burning truck, and they don't have any extra power. And that, that bed was bowed, where they had all these tank tracks on there. And so I went to get it, so I went to get it. And, when I come out of there, it's about probably a quarter of a mile from the sea company over to our motor pool, and it, it just barely pulled itself. So I drove back in, and I slipped it back in line, and I got out of it and went back to the office. So this guy at E6 in the office, he came out, and he seen that truck. He said, he came to me, and he said, uh, how come you didn't take that truck? Sal, you take cases. That was the main place. He said, why didn't you take that, that truck on Casey? I said, it, it won't want to go. Well, he said, you're the only one who drives it. Get it and take it down there anyway. <laughs> so he had to get a trip ticket. Yeah, they had to call a trip ticket out. The colonel had to sign it, and then you had to tell where you was going and all mm -hmm. this. So I got that, and I took off and went south. It's about 30 miles to go south down there. Wow. And it's all kind of flat. 
up in our way, but you get down in there, it's just long hills. So I barely got over this hill, and I got over the hill going into uh, Camp Casey, and it's, it's Koreans. I mean, wall to wall Koreans. They all walk in the middle of the road. So I come over this hill, and and it's a long hill. It's probably a half mile long. It's pretty steep. And that old truck getting to run them pretty fast. See? Well, it wasn't running too fast. Well, I you know, just kept braking it. The first thing you know, the brakes went clear to the floor. And so I started trying to gear it down, which with that load on, it, it just, it wouldn't slow. I just, I just had it in the lowest gear it could go, and and it just coasted on down there, and I blown had air horns on it. And I'd blown them air horns trying to get people out of the way, because that was a big no-no to hit a Korean, because they'd sue you for everything, the federal government anyway. Yeah. So we got down in there, and I docked them Koreans all the way down through there, and finally got it shut down. Oh, that was wow. one of the biggest things. Your heart is pounding the yeah. whole time. Because <laughs> now you're going to hit one of them. Yeah, you don't want that, no. that's for sure. No. That is for sure. That probably was the biggest hard trail. Other than that, I, I took another truck down there about the same spot, and we had an old junk truck in there. I mean, it's 104, I can remember the number on it. <laughs> and we didn't drive it. You know, it was, it, we had it online. Uh -huh. We had so many junky trucks. I mean, Korea was notorious for nothing but junk. We didn't even have tires. We'd have to go to the junkyard and get tires. Wow. They just send everything to Korea or Vietnam, I guess. We didn't, we didn't have anything. All the Korea, North, South Koreans had, they had brand new trucks, but mm. we didn't have any. But anyway, they had this old 104 sitting in line there, and we just didn't use it. If it, if it needed a bushel basket haul somewhere, that's what we'd haul on because it, it, it wouldn't haul anything else. <laughs> so one day somebody took it over and they loaded it with a fairly good load, mm. pretty good size load. And so there again, they told me to take it sour. So I went and got a trip ticket, and I got complained to the E6 in there. I said, that truck won't make it. I, I drove it different times for on compound. They're just doing different things. I knew it wouldn't make it because it, the transmission would fall off the motor because all the bolts are stripped out of it. Oh, wow. So it, it's six-wheel drive, see? Mm -hmm. well, it, when it drops down, the drive shafts make everything vibrate. Well, I'd stop in the middle of the road somewhere, and I'd take a 916 trench that I had in the truck, and I'd tighten this truck bell housing back up and get it all tightened back up, and then I could go for another a mile bit. or so. Yeah. But they was, well, had me to Casey with this truck, and I complained to C6 that I won't make it. I said, I guarantee you, well, I'll make it. Well, he, you know, I was just a yeah, GI. Will, will, I, no. didn't, I didn't know what I was talking about, so I kept complaining about it, and he said, well, go tell the motor fuel, or motor pool lieutenant. So, he was a he was a warrant officer and he 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 didn't care for me and I didn't care for him too much so I went in and I told him I said that truck will not make it down to Casey and he said well he said uh, are you a mechanic mm -hmm. well I just drive I said no I'm not a mechanic I was a mechanic that's all I done when I was mm -hmm. back home you know mm -hmm. and he's he ripped me up and down the line there for a little bit and I kept complaining I said well. I don't want to be responsible for it falling apart down there. He said, well, he said, I'll just sign a trip ticket. I'm responsible for it. If that satisfies you. And I said, well, if that satisfies you, that satisfies me. So we had a, a PFC there that you had a, you have had a shotgun, what they call a shotgun right here on your right, you know. So uh -huh. he said, get that guy and take him with you. And Hans was his name. So... We took on went south, on the same big long hill, going back into Casey. That thing started vibrating and shaking, and I thought, well, I'll kick it out of gear, but six-wheel drive, all the drive shafts were tied together to the transmission. It kept sitting there shaking, it was getting bad. Well, we finally leveled out on the flat down there in the bottoms, and we driving along, I put it in second gear, because all these greens are all the middle road, so you just got to drive real slow down through there. So I was driving along there, and it got to jumping out of second gear. It just popped out. Mm -hmm. So this Hans, I said, Hans, you hold her in gear, because I was driving both hands trying to dodge Koreans. <laughs> we were driving along there, and this transmission fell completely out. And when it did, somehow it flipped the gear shift around in there and broke this guy's thumb. He was hanging oh. on that and broke his thumb. Wow. And I, and I was watching the Koreans. I wasn't paying attention to what happened to him. I knew it beat the dash out of the truck when it 
when the air shift went around, and he jumped out with a squall bag and having a fit, you know, and I said, well, what in the world's the matter with you? He said, you broke my thumb. I said, well, I, did, I, didn't <laughs> I didn't touch you. <laughs> but it had been his thumb, I was a broker now, but it, it damaged his thumb. So, so did you just it, leave the truck there? Or? No, it was a, we was in what they call kind of the town, so uh -huh. and there's a military compounds along the side there, and there's a had to be a guard shack there. So fence, you know, and guard shack there. So I hollered over there at that guy, and he was inside there. He finally came out. I said, Can I use your phone? I said, I need to call back to Fort Beavers. And he said, Yeah, I said, you'll have to go on down the street there about a block or two and get in the main gate and come back. So I did walk down there and called that motor pool lieutenant at Warren Officer. I said, your truck's sitting down here at the transmission line on the ground. And we scattered oil and grease up and down that road, gears. So, oh, he said, you're kidding me. And I said, no. I said, I told you it wouldn't, <laughs> wouldn't make it. <laughs> well, he said, I'll send a, I'll send a wrecker. We had a wrecker up there. So it wasn't about, you know, 30 minutes here. He came with this wrecker. Well, he's a young guy, you know. Mm -hmm. He backed up there and hooked onto this truck with the winch line. It had a boom on the winch line. And I, I knew that wasn't right. I said, well, where's your tow bar? They got a tow bar hook on front of the truck and tied to the mm -hmm. wrecker, and that way it ties it together and you can't run into mm -hmm. each other. He kind of hung on around there a while. He said, well, he said, I don't have that tow bar. He said, I loaned that to a tank guy to pull tanks in with. And I said, well, how are you going to pull this thing? Well, he said, I'm going to pull that one line. I said, of course, when he hooks onto it, it's his baby. It's not mine no more. <laughs> So he, they sent another jeep down with him to load us up and take us back. So at that time, we was getting ready to head back, and he, I left it to him. So never thought no more about it. So about two or three weeks, they finally put the transmission back in that old truck and sent it back to Fort Beavers. And here come that, war, that lieutenant warrant officer. And he ripped me. He said, what did you tear that? How'd you, what did you run into with that truck? I said, I didn't run into nothing with that truck. I said, you better talk to your, your oh, tow God. truck driver. <laughs> so he, he got after him. He had to tell him that he loaned that tow bar out and didn't have one on that thing. Oh, he got in trouble, oh, didn't he? Yeah. <laughs> I, knew, I knew he was going to tear it up, but he wanted my, my deal. I left it to him when he Tied on to it. And you probably drove that truck many times after that. Then, yeah, too. yeah, it was a good truck after that. <laughs> yeah. They put new transmission. It's <laughs> all it took, and you were trying to tell them. Yeah, I felt sorry for a while. It, it bent his thumb back because I don't want like, gear shift to come back somehow. It bent the dash, everything out of that thing. Wow. Wow. But, At least everybody was, you know, not didn't get too mm -hmm. hurt anyway in the situation. So. That was only two memorable ideas or things that had going on. Yeah. Um, what were some of the pranks that you or others would pull, or did it did it happen? No, I don't believe there's many pranks that I can remember. Then the Koreans, we'd pull pranks on them, you know. Mm -hmm. It wasn't necessarily me. It was. I drove a truck that the guys rode in the back, and all the girls over there had a pot about that long, about that big around, and they'd have a little rolled up cloth on top of their head that they set on that, and that pot would set on top of that. Mm -hmm. you know, and they'd hang on to it with one hand. Well, they'd walk along the road, see? Uh, <laughs> Hell, the boys in the back either had a stick or something, and they'd, they didn't hit them, they'd just make a swipe at them. And what's them girls? keep that pot on top of their head, going out through the ditch or rocks or whatever, and they keep it on there. They'd never lose that pot. <laughs> Did they carry stuff or yeah, that what out? they had in it, they had carry things. They had kimchi. I don't know if you heard of kimchi or not. They mm -hmm. had kimchi in a lot of them. Hmm. It's a fermented cabbage. Yeah. Yeah, that's a big thing that they eat over there. Yeah. Huh. Um, let's see here. Did you do or have something special for good luck? No, no. Nope. Young and <laughs> when is goes and when. I hope it's for the best. Mm-hmm. Mm hmm What was the food like over there? Mm. I, I couldn't eat it. The Korean food or Yeah, is Korean. That? Army boat. I didn't, I drank chocolate milk. If I hadn't been chocolate milk, I'd probably starve to death. Wow. And the lucky thing about it, 
I finally got to run the rations. I run the rations for the whole battalion. Uh-huh. After I got out of that ammo dump, and I went to the driving lieutenants. Uh-huh. And I drove for him about two and a half months in that Derby, his name I think it was, Derby. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> he, he, he put me in for the four. So then I drove for him, you know, and I had a good job. I mean, and I was getting, I was getting down to the end. I didn't have much time left. And he, we were up there doing something one day, and he said, uh, "How long have you been for?" And it was just about two months. Is all I've been for. Mm -hmm. And he said, "Well," he said, "You're brought up for five." I said, "I said just been for two months. I didn't want five. I didn't, you know, money didn't amount to a whole lot over there, so I didn't." Didn't make any difference to me, so he didn't say no more. And then about another two or three weeks, he came along. He said, "I'll put your name in for five. I said, "Well, I didn't. Want, I don't. I don't care for that. I don't want that. You know, I want to stay right there for. I want to come out of there right there down in that jeep." Mm -hmm. So it wasn't. It wasn't just two or three weeks. They called back again. He said, "Well, he said you got to go. You got to go for a board review for five. So. I said, well, I don't have a problem. I don't have to I'll pass that, you know. So down there working the motor pool and finally that he six come out. He said, Well, he said, You're going for that board. He said, Go get your good fatigues on, boss in boots, get everything straightened up. <laughs> look at the current events. I think he had to look at current events. He had to know something about military, whatever they called it, order or whatever at that time. And I wasn't much of a soldier. I was just uh, there because I was drafted. So I didn't look at current events, I didn't look at and whatever I knew about the military at that that's time, that's all I knew. So went up there, well this whole board was these guys I drove for. And a little more pool lieutenant and uh -huh. all these guys which I knew very so well. Knew you. Yeah. So I walked in there and the main guy was sitting in the middle there, you know, and so I just walked in and told him, you know, I think I was four at that time. I said Special fourth class Jerry Aldrin Porter, and he started coming up for a salute, and I just dropped mine. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably not the right thing to do, was no. it? <laughs> he sat there a little bit and looked around. He said, "Now, Osborne, he said you get back out that door, and he said you come back in here right, because he said you're going to get this five whether you like it or not." <laughs> <laughs> so you didn't have a choice. <laughs> no. Well, he didn't have no fives. We had a guy in our platoon that was an E eight. But you never see Harley in a platoon leader as an E8, and he hated you. I guarantee you, he hated you. Mm. And if you was five or above, you you better run pretty straight because he was going to bust you. I seen a number of guys busted, you know. So I really didn't so care about did. going any higher than what I was. Yeah, understand. But they, they finally put, he stuck me in his five, and, and then they didn't have no place for him to go, you know. But they needed them, but they didn't have me lined up because they still had guys in place that was going to leave but hadn't left yet. Mm -hmm. So I was really in supplies, what it was, you know. But we had a supply but, uh, concert hut here and it's one over here. Mm -hmm. And the ones that issued clothing were in here and ones that issued uh, rations were here. And the ones over here in this one was the ones that run the ammo and petroleum. Well, I was in this one. Mm -hmm. So this supply officer come by, I met him on the sidewalk one day, and he said, uh, you're five, ain't you? I didn't, I didn't put them five stripes on because I didn't, I didn't have orders for them. And we had a year come south of us, see, mm -hmm. just a block, and I could go down there and drink beer as a four. But you can't drink beer down there to five. Oh. So I'd go down there, see, and didn't have didn't have orders for five. I just go down there and this guy in the EM club, he said, Aren't you five? I said, Nope. So it wasn't there two later, he came back. He said, I checked the records, he said, You are five, and he said, You're supposed to have the stripes on. He said, You still have stripes on. Right, so we had a lot of stories about <laughs> <laughs> well, that's so, what we're here for. <laughs> so this guy in our hoods, we hired guys to clean our quantity. Uh huh. Oh, John, what his name was. I said, Oh, John, I guess we're going to have to sew them stripes on. So he mm -hmm. finally sewed them on for me. <laughs> then I had to go clear to 
officer's club about a quarter of a mile turn over the hill. You know, a long haul for me to just go over to drink beer. Wow. So I finally done that. And I don't remember what we were talking about before we got to that. But the food. Yeah. Yeah. The food. You so I made, I made five. So that supply officer, he ran the rations. So he said, he told me, he said, ask me the five. And I said, five got around me. Yeah, it was. So he said, <laughs> well, he said, uh, you want a, you want a job? I said, well, what is it? Well, he said, we need to five up the ration right now. They just had two PFCs up there, that's all they had, and they ran it. Mm -hmm. But the colonel said, we want five, five charcoal, you know. I said, well, I'm not too smart. I said, I don't, you know, it's paperwork stuff. So I, he said, well, he said, it ain't that guy. He said, I got two PFC, PFCs up there that know what they're doing. He said, no problem, they'll teach you. So <laughs> I finally decided to take it, but anyway, I was in this other Quonset hut. Mm -hmm. And about nine o'clock one night, we'd been mauling this project all over, and this E6 was in this, running this Quonset hut. He came out there about nine o'clock one night, and he said, uh, you gonna take that job up for ration breakdown? I said, well, I guess I can't, well, you know. He well, fiddled around a little bit, and he said, well, he said, if you're gonna take that job, you get over near the hooch. I said, well, I'll do that tomorrow. He said, no, you'll do it tonight. <laughs> so you got a bed, you got, you know, wall, foot lockers, wall lockers, you know, and then they had a little kimchi stand you kept her too. He said, I want you out of here tonight. Nine oh. o'clock at night. Wow. So nothing to do, but I had to load it all up, <laughs> moved over there, stayed in, and I stayed out in the open with the rest of the guys. Five, you get a room. Mm -hmm. Well, there's a guy back there, so, and he was higher rank, he wasn't higher rank, but he was, older rank than I was, so I didn't get that. Oh, wow. So, stayed out there for a good little bit, and finally he moved out. So they moved me back there, and so finally I got to go up there, and these two PFC, one of them was from New York, and the other one was from Kentucky, I think. The Kentucky guy, he was just kind of an old, good old boy. But the New Yorker was a New Yorker, you know. <laughs> oh, boy, yeah. I came in there, and we had a this little hooch was way up on the hill, up over the animal dump, and that was the only thing ever. Oh, wow. So I came in there, and I said, well, I said, they sent me up here. And he was hostile, first thing, this, you know, we just guys, and Rank didn't mean a whole lot to, over there. So, boy, he let me know right quick that he, was in charge. he ran that thing, and I was not to be doing anything. Well, we had a day bed there. I don't know why, but they had a day bed there. So I laid down on the bed and we had magazines and he said I'll run this thing he said I'll do the paperwork he said I don't want you for doing nothing so okay. fine with me so I laid down on the bed and looked at magazines and went on for probably a, a week or two uh, and he finally said well he said uh, I, I need a little help and I said oh I don't know about that help I said you told me now you didn't want me helping well he said I thought you was going to really run rough shot over, you know, straighten things up. I said, no, I said, I'm here till I go home. And I said, that's all I'm here for, you know. So we got along pretty good after that. After that incident. But the worst thing about it, I didn't learn what else to do, you know. I was a head guy. I should have known what to do. Well, this guy that was from New York, ran. he took off. He, I think, went home on a leave or something, emergency leave or something. Anyway, it was dropped on me. Well, I'd went along. I had to be the guy that kept everybody going and where, where to go. But I didn't see what he'd done. I didn't, you know, I knew we'd made paperwork out and then we turned it in. So, boy, I... So you had to learn quick. I had to learn quick. So we went down there and I guess, well, all you got to do is get your papers out of there. And he said, you make them out. Well, what I didn't know is they gave me two. We draw directions every other day. And they gave me two days, like tomorrow, mm -hmm. and then they jumped today, and then the next day. They gave me those two sets of papers. I didn't realize, I wasn't smart enough to look at, they probably had a date on it, you know, and you, this date's for tomorrow, and this date's for two days. Yeah. Down the road. I didn't see that. So then I knew the percentages you had to break down, and break down all the companies. 
ABC company. I had to break all the rations down for each mm -hmm. one of them. I knew the percentages, but I had to break them down on paper by hand. And they had a guy up there in, in the company that didn't do nothing. He was a smart guy. I knew he was pretty smart. And I went and got him. I said, I have to break these things down. And I said, I'm not going to be able to get it done. You had to have it done by probably 2, 33 o'clock to distribute it to all of the Never companies mm -hmm. to get it done. But quitting time. So I got this guy. And he said, well, he said, do you do this all the time? And I said, no. I said, the, the things had the percentage on it. If you had the right papers, it had the percentage on it. So all you had to do is just, you know, tell what you had, and then we had a Korean that worked with us, and he he knew all he knew how many people you had in our, each company. See, so he would break that thing down within probably whatever you had a pound or two of this. He knew exactly what them people had to have. See, so oh, wow. then when you give him the papers, he just moved a little bit here, and there, and it was all set up. He had a five ton with a cardboard between it and you'd have all the C counties here and then the cardboard and yeah. A, B, C right on down the line. See, so hmm. it's pretty simple for him because he'd been there so long he knew how to do it. Yeah. Well, I didn't know how, <laughs> I didn't know how to do it. See? So we broke them all down by hand and had a pretty good shape and del delivered everything. And then next week the same thing because they had the wrong papers in the wrong spot, see? So mm -hmm. this guy that was there, he finally come back with him a week or two, and I was telling him about it. I said, that thing is all messed up. I said, we didn't know what we've done. So he got the papers out, and he said, well, you just had them on the wrong day. He said, you should have had this. <laughs> that two, three days down the road, should have been back here, you know. It's like, okay. <laughs> now yeah. I'm going to learn. <laughs> but that Korean we had saved me a lot of times. He he could pick up, he could pick up anything and tell you what it was. We'd wow. get coffee and sugar. And all that stuff, you know, and it was mm -hmm. in small amounts. It wasn't, you know, like maybe 15, 20 pounds or whatever. Right. But he'd pick it up, see. And know exactly and what it was. They'd steal out of that, see. They'd just take a cup full out of each, everybody's ration, um, you know, and, and steal it. Mm -hmm. Basically what they was doing. Well, he would know if they took like a pound out of it. He'd know exactly what it was. And he'd haul around. I'd, I'd sit on shotgun side, see him. And... He'd haul around the window there. He said, this is, uh, he said, it's short. Oh, it right? Wow. Well, you had to walk about a block down the road here to, to scales to weigh it. Mm -hmm. and I think they'd done that on purpose because they didn't think you wanted to walk down there to weigh that stuff, you know. So we'd walk down there, and I never walked down there one time that that guy wasn't right. He knew exactly wow. what that stuff weighed. Steaks, we'd get steaks in a big box. They'd take two or three out, see every box. Thinking no one would ever no, know. No, no. Because yeah. most of the guys probably going down there didn't know what that stuff weighed. See, well, that old right. man, he'd haul around. He said, "She's short." He'd throw that back. He would throw it back on the on the truck. He wouldn't uh, stack in the bottom. So hmm. we'd go down there and weigh it. Boy, it'd always be short. That old man, he knew what he was doing. Now, did you guys pay? Did he get paid? He was he was a civil worker. Oh, okay, civil worker. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So then he did get paid. Yeah. You don't he want to mess a, up he, that. Yeah. He was a good old boy. He'd break that stuff down. They take us probably. Oh, an hour or two to do the paperwork inside, you know. And when we got out there, he'd have it up stacked on that dock. We had a dock we backed up to, you know, and he'd have it all broke down on that dock. And he'd look at the papers and he'd shuffle it around a little bit. He said, she's good to go. And he'd say, load her up. Like, okay. We, we'd take off. <laughs> so wow. I don't know what we'd have done. it had been a lot more work we hadn't had him. I was going to say, it sounds like it. he was pretty exact on a lot of things. So yeah, had me take a one day. I'd... You had to come off of the main hill over here and down this road and come around to an engineering opening, you know, gate. Mm -hmm. and come around up in here. And there's a big long rock wall here that went around. And the Koreans had stacked that rock up to there. And so uh, I walked over there every morning, you know. So I walked by there and there's a big, big old snake laying on this rock wall. And mm -hmm. I walked by there about every morning and a big old snake be laying on that wall. You know, he's out there in the sunshine, the sun, you know. Mm -hmm. So... I never thought nothing about it until we got this old boy's working for us, see? We was in there just talking. We played uh, hearts. Played hearts all the time. Mm -hmm. Well, he didn't play hearts, but he always came in there and visit with us and then go back outside. Well, we got talking about that snake. And, boy, his ears perked right up. He said, where's that snake at? I said, well, he's down on that wall. Well, he got him a box, and down there he went, and he killed that snake. Oh, and, wow. They eat them snakes like they're going out of style. Oh, no thanks. <laughs> but they had uh, Chinese pheasants uh -huh. 
and I don't think they ate them things. I, don't, I never did see anybody shoot one of them or catch them from Chinese pheasants. I tried to track them up. I couldn't track them up. There was a lot of Chinese pheasants over there. And then they had a little short deer about that tall. Oh. And I think they'd, they'd get them because I seen a skin up on the hill where they'd skin one out. A little bitty deer. Oh, wow. But they, they, they ate them snakes and dogs. Yeah. We had a dog over there, and it didn't last but about a month, and he was gone. Mm, he got taken. That's not good. Yeah, but everybody eats a little different everywhere, don't yeah. they? That's probably why you I didn't eat Korean food. I couldn't take that Korean food. <laughs> I a, I've never tried it, so I don't know. <laughs> I had a guy, a buddy of mine, that was around home there. He, I was uh, down in the, uh, what do they call it, uh, recreational room, mm -hmm. playing pool. And this guy come by, and he said, you know who I am? And I didn't recognize him right off, and he was a neighbor there. Huh. So he was married to wine girls over there. Huh. And so... I got there and had and you had to stay on post for so many, like a month or something before you get off post. So he he said, "Well, won't you come down to the village?" He lived in the village down there. Huh? So on the E5s up there, he said, well, "I said I can get you a pass, you know, for the time limit was up. It's getting pretty close to being up." And I said, "Ah, not interested." I said, "I'm not <laughs> interested really in going down there. You know, I was new and I didn't." Yeah. Anyway, he, they said he'd a head of a fly, you know, pretty rough cooking over there. And he had that uh, yellow jaundice, I don't even know what they call it, but your eyes turn yellow. And, oh, jaundice, uh -huh. Yeah, it's a jaundice like that. You know, they said you got it from eating the head of a fly. And he was, he was awful thin. I mean, it was, it was working on him. Mm. So I didn't think I needed to be going down there. I didn't, I didn't, they told us you couldn't even eat an apple. Over. They had a lot of apples and they looked good, you know, but they said even apples, you could have stuff in them. That they had uh, human waste that they fertilized with. Ew. Them low valleys through there, if you drove a truck through there, you'd have to hold your breath for half a mile if you could hold it. Because they stirred this thing first thing in the morning. You had a pit out there about the size of that opening out there. Mm. And they had a big stick and they stirred it. First thing in the morning. So all that smell hung in that lower Oh, I'm area. sure it did. Yeah. And then when they got ready to spread it, they had them long pots, and they had a thing across their back, and two pots out on each side full of that That's stuff. And they, and they called it a Chinese cabbage. Was, cabbage grew about that tall and about yay big around. Loose leaf looking thing. Mm -hmm. So they'd go out there and fertilize that. Because that smell was all over that territory. No, I'm sure. <laughs> Yeah, I don't think I'd want to eat any of that either after oh. <laughs> after you know what all's going on. <laughs> oh, I wow. can always stand the chow. I I I wouldn't eat. I drink chocolate milk, but when I got to run rations, they bring in bologna. They had them big bologna like you used to see in the stores, about that big around, mm -hmm. you know, big long one, and cheese the same way. That big long cheese. So That's we got them up first, you know, and then that day in between, they baked bread somewhere. And they backed a the truck up there, and we had about, well, however many companies we had, a stall about four foot wide and four foot deep, and they stacked this full of bread hmm. each for each company. So I'd get me a loaf of bread, had a brown paper sack. That's what they had it in. So I'd get me a loaf of bread and bologna and, and cheese. Bologna and cheese. And that's what I made it on. <laughs> <laughs> hey, if it works, right? Yeah. <laughs> and that's what you did. But we used to have C rations, mm -hmm. you know, and... That was one of the advantages of being up there. See, if we were going out on an alert and, and the colonel knew that, why well, he would, he'd call up to my place up there and he'd say, well, he'd say, we need so many sea rations for so many days. So, well, I knew when you have sea rations, you're going to, out in the country. Mm -hmm. So I'd have them sea rations. Well, we, I think there was 44 in a box. Well, if it broke out where you needed all these so many boxes and half of another box, I kept the other half of the box up there, see? Um, so he might have like three or four boxes, a meal box, mm -hmm. might have three or four of them in the leftover part, see? Well, yeah. in between time, we did, I'd eat them. Well, they had three cigarettes in there, the little, little box, about yay wide, and 
and told a cigarette. She got three cigarettes in it. It was probably boxed in 1944, about the time I was born. <laughs> and the can still had 1944 on the top oh, of it. Oh, wow. Some of the, that you could not eat. I think I, I could eat butter beans and uh, ham. And I forget now what else. There's about one or two things. They had about like four or five things. Eggs and eggs and something. I didn't eat eggs. And they had chocolate in there that, you know, how you get chocolate. It's been laid around for several years and got that whitish looking to it. That's the way the chocolate was. But you ate it because that was the only thing you had. Wow. <laughs> Them cigarettes, I guarantee you. They, I didn't smoke anyway. I just smoked to have something to do. But then things woo, were rough. <laughs> Get what you got, right? Yeah. Hmm. But that's pretty handy. I knew where we was going because they when they call up or I I tell the guy, I said, get your stuff ready. We're going someplace, you know. Because <laughs> you got the rations on. Yeah, had to order the rations. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I know you said when we were up when we were coming up, um, for entertainment you saw US a couple USOs. Mm -hmm. I think you had two while I was there. Two of them? What did, who did you see? Did you see anybody? Or do you I remember? Don't know. You couldn't get that. Oh. There's a whole whole battalion going to this right. little spot that was it wasn't even it was a theater like deal, you mm -hmm. know. Yeah. So you'd had to got there half a day early. Of course you couldn't do that because they Yeah, you had to work still. So I never did really get to see them. You know, and there really wasn't much they, else. I think they were pretty good. A lot of guys bragged on them, didn't you, down there? You know? mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That, was, that was the only entertainment. Wow. Well, we, we went to a football game one time, which was a fiasco. <laughs> <laughs> we took that. Uh, I didn't want to go to it because I'm not a football person anyway. So they insisted. I think a lot of the guys were complaining because there wasn't nothing to do. There wasn't nothing going on, you know. We had a baseball diamond, but that was whoever won the play. I never, I never seen nobody play on. Oh, wow. But anyway, the colonel I think took this up, thing up, and they was going to that football game. So they got a bunch of trucks, and I tried to hide. We had a I had a uh, craft shop down there, and I like to make model airplanes and leather work. Mm -hmm. So I hid out down there. I was going to hide down there. Well, they come around and hunted every place that you could hide. Oh. So you everybody had to go. So we did, and we got on the truck of our uh, concert up there, and Walker, the old cutter boy, he was on there, and he said, oh, I said, I wish we had something to drink. And I, and I was E5 at that time, so I could buy whiskey. Well, I'd bought a quart of vodka, and he said, well, why don't you bring that vodka with us? So I said, okay. So back in America, we got the vodka in there. So as soon as we got headed down the road, we got to drink that. Of course, we got pretty wound up before we got there. <laughs> and they had these Merrimack cans. They called them, that, and it was like a cooler. You know, uh -huh. put ice and sodas and stuff in them. Well, they got the aggravating the Koreans with the ice, you know, throwing the ice at all them, and then throw it all at them. So we got down there and got and had the concrete steps made where you sat, you know, so. We decided we need some more of that vodka. So we walked, I don't know how far, off to the east to find somebody. And they wasn't open. Finally found somebody to open that thing out. And I think we bought another couple of quarts of vodka. You came, couldn't buy nothing but quarts. That's all they carried over there. Huh. So time we got that used <laughs> up, we was not too good of a bunch of people. And we started back, and they thought all that ice at everybody going back. And all the hats, all had baseball hats, you know, then. Mm -hmm. They thought every baseball hat away. Oh, wow. we had been court-martialed. <laughs> Got that upgrade. I don't remember ever seeing I remember them shooting a the gun. They had a gun down there that they shot to start it, you know, the uh -huh. cannon. <laughs> That's the only thing I remember them doing, shooting the cannon. <laughs> oh, wow. Wow. Well, I guess it was a little bit of entertainment yeah, then, a, yeah, for the day. That was a, Entertainment of the day. I think that's the only thing we've ever done other than USO shows we had. Hmm. <laughs> wow. Well, how did you stay in touch with um, your family while you were over there? Writing a letter, that's all that. That's all you couldn't call well, or uh, it was Well I tried to call her one time. One time. I told her before you couldn't call. Mm hmm There wasn't any no one she tried to call, I think was a few uh uh, uh what do you call it? Uh, 
Oh, the shortwave radios. Oh, you know, uh huh. Where you they, you, you could kick it if you get everybody lined up across their place. They would kick the signal. Oh wow! And then we had tanks. They had the big tanks. Mm -hmm. We could listen to Vietnam. You know, calling in artillery and all that. It was our tanks. Then the motor would see. So mm -hmm. if you get everybody lined up, you kick that signal back and forth across the country, and you, and you could talk for a little, a little bit. bit. Yeah. Before yeah. telephone, there wasn't nothing up there with that. Oh, I'm sure. Hmm. But I know you then, you weren't over there for what you say a couple of years. You said or a little short the little two short. years. Yeah. I so you didn't have tours, and then I extended to three months. I think it was extra yeah. to get out five. Yeah, so five. Seventeen months, I think. So. Did you have any personal time, personal leave during mm -hmm. that, or you were just there well, the whole? I came home from uh, Fort Knox, and I think I had a little less than a week. That's when fifty-seven or fifty-seven comes. Out of the south, uh -huh. highway. They were building that. They were building the bridges. I live right there next to it. Oh, okay. And my dad was a contractor on mm -hmm. those bridges, and he worked me for two or three days out there. And then I loaded them, went to uh, Seattle, Washington, and shipped out of Seattle, Washington to Korea. To Korea. We left that morning from Seattle, and you couldn't see that wall. It was so foggy. Oh, wow. So they took off, and we hadn't got no harness sailing in that. Pilot said, he said, we're committed. He said, we can't go back. He said, they closed the airport. Wow. So we was going to Honolulu, Hawaii. Uh -huh. And we went through, I bet you, 15 layers of clouds. Ooh. And the wings were bouncing up and down on that old jet. We took a jet over there and flew for, I bet you, two hours. And finally, come on the radio. And he said, well, he said, or he said, we're going to have to make a decision. He said, uh, we're running out of fuel. And he said, we can't make it to Honolulu. And he said, uh, he said, I think our best bet was going to go to uh, Anchorage, Alaska. Oh, he wow. said, we got enough fuel to get to Anchorage. So we well, headed her north to Anchorage. I don't think that airport was made for that big old jet we had. But, but he got her in there. Land. <laughs> and it was raining. It was foggy in Seattle, raining. Mm -hmm. And it was raining in Anchorage, Alaska. And it was rain, raining in, in Tokyo, Japan when I got there. And then it was still raining in Korea. When I landed in Korea. So it must have been raining in the northern part of the world. It followed you there. I don't know how long it took us to get over. A long time to get over there. You yeah. know? And then we loaded up out of uh, Korea, come back, and I think it took us like, it was just a short time. We were well, ready to get back. He said we had a 600 mile an hour tailwind behind us, and man, we came on back. Wow. Wow. Did you keep any type of personal diary while you were there, or no? You no. Know? Nope. What did you think of um, your fellow soldiers and officers? I'd say most of them was pretty good. Now they they had the marijuana problem over there, mm -hmm. and this liaison officer I drove for, he was responsible for taking these boys to ask them. They got a prison down there named Ask. Ask on what was the name of it, mm -hmm. and so I hauled a lot of them. So I got to see what you got into. If you got, if you I wasn't a dumb smoker anyway. But man, them guys had, well, they said one boy tried to haul a, a cement sack full out the front gate, <laughs> you know. So, <laughs> but then people rolled it over there. I mean, you could you could get the best over there. Hmm. This Buckley, a guy named Buckley, and I don't know if it was related to the Buckley, you know, we had a Buckley uh, mm -hmm. senator or whatever he mm -hmm. was, and I don't know, he, he had to be some relation to him, hmm. because we had, a, in our Quonset hut, we had a day room on the end of it, well, it was, it was nothing, it was nothing, I mean, he didn't have nothing, it had a, supposedly a broke stereo and a pool table, didn't have no ball, didn't have no cue stick, didn't have nothing, <laughs> and he complained. He complained about them not having no recreational room. So they they finally bought fixed the stereo and if they got some balls and, and cue sticks and then we had to walk guard on it. We walked guard on it twenty four hours a day, seven days a week. Oh wow. Oh it rained snow, sleep. <laughs> so he he did he didn't like that too well, but it finally slid by and so then he he was a dope smoker. He was a dope smoker. So he got to want me to buy uh, money order, money orders. Mm -hmm. You'd only ship out so much money. They knew how much money you made, 
So um, if you started shipping out more money than you was making, and there was a problem, you was stealing or yeah, making money. So he said, "Well, why don't you buy me my daughter?" Well, I could have. I, I didn't, you know, I, mean, I didn't sell nothing or have that much money. But mm -hmm. I little area done it for him, you know. But he, I see him where they get these cigarettes. Mm -hmm. Now they buy. Uh, that time you had uh, Chesterfields or all the popular brands. You know, you just buy that down there. They had a little PX down there. You could buy that whole carton of cigarettes. Mm -hmm. Well, they'd give it to them Koreans, see. They would take it. They'd unseal that off of that front, take all them cigarettes out there, and mm -hmm. take all the cigarettes out of the inner bunch, and take everything apart, just real neat, fill them cigarettes back full of marijuana, stack them all back in that cigarette pack, he put the seal back on it. Oh, wow. The whole night, you couldn't tell it from a package you bought off the counter. And then he'd box it up and leave two cigarette Packages on each end of that carton, seal that all back up, he'd send her back to the States. So then they'd send him the money back, I guess, and then he'd he'd have more money and he could buy money mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And that's how they get caught. That's how they get caught. Ooh, wow. And they'd sell ammunition to the South Korea or whoever. I don't know who they sell them to. They, huh. This one E five told me one day, he said, You don't sell that ammunition, I was that you know, getting a Z5, I wasn't in charge of the ammo dump, but I still hauled whenever they needed a driver, I still hauled. He told me, he said, well, he said, if you want to sell that ammunition, he said, here's the old boy's seat. He was standing right outside the gate. I was, I was always hilarious. I said, yeah, I, like, been, I want to get back home. Yeah, <laughs> I've been down to Ascom. That was all bad times. You got down there for six months, you come back and start over. Oh. So you still had your time left after you got out of Ascom. Yeah, so, yeah, no, that wouldn't have been good then, definitely not. I had one old boy that stayed right beside me in the barracks, and they come in there one night, uh, uh, what they call them, uh, CIA, mm -hmm. I think CIA. Anyway, they was guys that was kind of in the whole area, but they was soldiers, but they were just, they was military, it wasn't military police, but they were, they were, like they above get that. you. Mm -hmm. Well, they, they come in, and this old boy there beside me, they had these federal, U.S. federal locks. They put him on his wall locker and his foot locker and everything and hauled him off. And they oh, took wow. them things and dug in his pockets where he'd lay them cigarettes in his pocket. And if they found, I forget yeah, what it was, yeah. a gram or less than a gram, if they found it in there, he was out. And they, they, I hauled him down to Esco. <laughs> wow. Yeah, so you didn't want to go down no. there, that's for sure. <laughs> no, I don't want to go home. <laughs> yes, yes. So when you were there, you did you see any combat at all, or mm -hmm. no? Okay, you were just no. yeah, no, which was probably a good thing. North Koreans would just up and shoot you. You know, you didn't know who it was. Or I sat on my barracks. You know, we lived on the hill on the on the south side, mm -hmm. and I could watch them on the north side over there. And South Korean uh, rock army, they done the shoot. And they'd shoot them over on that north hill over, and I'd sit there and watch them. You see the blaze run out of, your, out of the barrel, you know. Mm. They didn't want, they tell us, if you take ammunition or a rifle, you better not shoot nobody, you know. Unless right. it's, you know, you, if it is actually self defense and you could pretty well prove, you better have somebody with you to prove it. Because if it's an international incident, they they, didn't care for that. Oh man, they'd get after you. I think one guy shot a, a Korean stealing stuff up there with 50 caliber. And they court martialed him. Oh, wow. Because he couldn't prove that, you know, he was actually stealing it, but he knew he was. Right, he, didn't, he had no that. proof or no one to back him up. Wow. Actually, I didn't really carry a rifle. You know, they said anything from where I was at, 38th parallel, you had to carry a rifle. There was no MP, no nothing up in there. That was just wilderness up in there. And so they said, well, you better have a rifle with you all the time. But you, you couldn't have no ammunition. <laughs> so if I could get him, he's got to work the ammo dump. See? Yeah. But, but then again, they'd say, "Well, if you shoot somebody, you better make sure that he's yeah. really legitimate." So I think I just stay on base the whole time. Yeah. <laughs> Not worry about it. <laughs> oh goodness. But that old boy out in arms room was the aggravation guy. He wouldn't. He wouldn't take that. I stack mine, and we'd go to you know come back. Well, child time a certain time. See, well, if you didn't go down there and get something, why well, you didn't get it. So mm -hmm. I just set my rifle in the, way in the wall locker seat and go down to Chow. Well, mm -hmm. that guy couldn't go to Chow because he was in the arm room. He had to have all them rifles back in that arm room before he'd go to Chow. <laughs> so they go, he'd go to uh, headquarters and 
complain because the guys wouldn't bring the rifles back. So they get after me. You know, where's your rifle? I said, it's up there in the wall locker. He said, oh, he don't put that in that wall locker. He said, get that thing back over I said, he won't take it. Because <laughs> it's not clean enough. Yeah. <laughs> oh, goodness. Wow. Wow. So were you awarded any medals or? No, nah, I got I got a service medal. Just a service medal. For being over there? Yeah. yeah since you got out. How did you feel about leaving the service? Tickled. I bet. It sounded like it. I started signing out of the company over there. You know, it's just a little podium just dying to sign out. <laughs> I didn't know where it was at. And, and trying to sign out, that guy in charge, he said, get out of here. He said, I'll sign your name out. He said, get out. And then they wouldn't even first me a ride back south. Uh -huh. I had to find my own ride back south. <laughs> nice, and you were driving for how many? <laughs> oh, yeah. I said, this is a great outfit. <laughs> had to go 30 miles back south to Casey City to get a bus to mm -hmm. go to uh, Kempo. They wouldn't even pressure. Right. He said, well, you can catch a ride. You know, be somebody going south. I said, well, yeah, probably will be sometime. <laughs> sometime, yeah. How, how long, though, is the question, right? <laughs> yeah. That, that was quite an outfit up there. <laughs> Did your military experience influence your thinking about war or military in general? What's that again? Did your military experience influence your thinking about war or military in general? Yeah, I think it influenced. If you'd had to fought over in Korea, it had been something I wouldn't want to have done. I'd probably have done it because I had to do it. But it just, that was just, they just wasn't nothing about that outfit over there. That was, you know, you could, I don't know how you'd say it, you know, but it was just rough. I mean, it was just, just tough all the way. Mm -hmm. And were you, you were drafted in, is that, mm -hmm. yeah. I've been married for probably three years. They were just mentioning that they were going to take married people. Mm -hmm. and boy, it wasn't, it wasn't a short time. I got a letter and I was drafted out. Loaded on, had two buses in Marion County, and they took two buses to St. Louis, and me and a guy from my YouTube were the only two guys I think it made. Hmm. And they had a bunch of, all my buddies, they lived in a little town of Alma, and Kim Mundy, and Salem, you know, and they was a bunch of guys I knew, and I just, just assumed everybody get the same thing. Mm -hmm. Boy, they, we come out and room about twice this big, had a bunch of chairs there, and we all sat down, and he said, well, he said, I'll call you up when you're, either not going or if you are going. And me and old Dave was the only two sitting there left. And he um, said, you guys are going to Fort Knox, Kentucky. Well, he took us back there and they were going to induct us, you know, in the back room. Mm -hmm. Hold up your hand. And this big old guy come in there and he said, I need two Marines today. And he finally, he want, they want big people for Marines. And I was glad I was a little guy. Yeah, it's like, oh, I'm not going. He said, yeah, you and you are Marines today. And the rest of us stood up and held her hand up and we loaded out the front door and come right back to the little town I lived in going to Fort Knox, Kentucky. Wow. And I spent basic and AIT there and came home and spent four days I think home and headed to Korea. And that was the only time I was ever out in the military. I even got, when I got out five months early, I couldn't even sign up for unemployment because that five months was wow. military time and they were still paying me just like I was in the military. So you couldn't even... I couldn't yeah. even draw unemployment. Of course, didn't have much money. I done spent that. Well, you couldn't get out of Korea. I forget how much money you could bring out of Korea. So you but they really bring changed it. over at MPC over, see? Mm -hmm. So you take MPC back over to our money here, and you don't allow you so much money. So mm -hmm. I had, I got, and I got paid twice. I got paid in the company because it was last of the month. I got money there. So I got back to Casey to leave, and he said, well, you're entitled to money. For this month, I said, no, I already got paid. So I went over, and he said, well, you got to go in. So I went over, and I talked to that guy, and I said, I already got money. I didn't want to get where I had money, and then they want to come back and get it. Get so, it, right, yeah. So he looked at things a little bit, and he said, well, he said, I tell you what. He said, they're not going to catch it. He said, you'll be, he said, you're leaving. Ain't you getting out? I said, yeah. I said, I'm going home as soon as I get Kate, uh, mm -hmm. Washington. He said, well, he said, they'll never catch it. And he said, they ain't going to come home and get you. Get for that, I think it was, he went over like two, four hundred dollars. It was worth that to mm -hmm. yeah. He said, I wouldn't worry about it, so just take this money and go. So okay. I did. So that put me way over the money, see? Yeah. So, 
and, and I, I think went down there to get the money, and they said, no, you can't, I'll give you so much money for what you, you know, the, the legal limit. Mm -hmm. Well, I still had like three or $400 left, so he said, well, the best thing you do is go to PX, and I can still ship stuff home, see? He said, you better off go to PX and spend that money and ship it home, because that's the only way you get it out of here. Mm -hmm. So I bought my... Stock for some reason, okay. So you got the money back home then, or you got some stuff back home, which was Yeah, I bought, I bought two set of dishes, I bought her pearl ring, and I think uh, my sisters, I bought, they had big glass, they had dolls, had dolls, and I bought dolls that was in a glass cage about yay high, and mm -hmm. I bought all them, you know, I, I spent all the money. <laughs> so then you had nothing to come, yeah. Oh. Well, I still had one that's legally to come the back The 300, with. right, to come back with, but... What did you do in the um, when you got back? What did you do like the days and the weeks after? I mean, just I was construction, so I got back. Oh, so you got right back into work and yeah. Did you use the GI Bill at all and go yeah, to school or? They, I somehow did call me one time. I wanted to know if I wanted to use it, and uh -huh. I, I didn't know what they were. It was a telephone call, so right, so right. So I didn't know whether it was legitimate or not, and I didn't. I really didn't have nothing I was going into anyway. Right. So then you just worked and was in construction. Um, did you join a veterans organization? Not till the last few years. Not well, DAV there, Mount Vernon. Mm -hmm. With Ted Buck and all you know, Ted Buck or not. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. He's down there. So you do a lot of activities and stuff have, yeah. with them? Yeah. Just a little bit, yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, have you attended any reunions with No, the I don't. I've looked in the. Uh, what is it we get? We get some kind of magazine, and I look in the back for. Anything out of Korea? And, mm -hmm. and they steal a little bit, but not very much. Not too much. I don't know. They must not be a bunch that gets together. Right. I know other guy. I got a buddy of mine. He goes different places. He was, I think, in Navy, and they all get together. But I've never seen anything out of Korea. Hmm. You know? How has your service and experiences affected your life? Right. Not much, other than me just losing the time away from your <laughs> yeah, life. That's about it. Yeah. Yep. Do you have any last comments you'd like to share with us? Or anything that you could think of that would no, that we didn't I, touch upon? That we I guess it was a good experience, but I wouldn't give what? fifteen cents for it. <laughs> <laughs> but this happened. Well we want to thank you for your time and your service to our country. So thank, thank you for you. taking it. <laughs> yeah.